I don't want to use the term Manson girls anymore. Like they're women in their 60s. They've been in prison for most of their adult life, all of their adult life, arguably. They're not his and they're definitely not girls. And like, so let's just stop that. And they were all like, oh Jesus, we got a live one. <laughs> but I was like, for real, can we stop fucking calling them that? It's very hard to get the term Manson girl out of your vocabulary because it's so widely used, but it's really emblematic of the blatant misogyny around how the women involved in the Manson murders have been portrayed over the last half century. Right from early news reports, Susie Atkins, Leslie Van Houten and Patricia Krenwinkel were never treated like Manson despite being tried alongside him. The focus quickly turned to what they looked like, what they wore, the ribbons in their hair. Constance Grady wrote about this treatment of the women for Vox. There's this intense focus on the idea that the girls are all having sex with Manson and all of his friends and that this is kind of a sexy, exciting idea and that they're sort of in this flower child free love orgy at all times. And it takes quite a few decades before the dominant narrative switches away from that to be like, these girls were being sexually abused by someone who had psychological control and power over them. Charlie Says is a film that at least brings some autonomy back to the women who killed for Manson. Starring Matt Smith as Charlie, it was written by Guinevere Turner, who's probably most well known for American Psycho. Look at that subtle off-white colouring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my god. It even has a watermark. She was approached by the producers to write a screenplay about the Manson girls and was intrigued by the challenge. Like everybody knows about, you know, the orgies and the music and the acid, and then everybody knows about the trials and the shaved heads and the, you know, the, the, the theatrics of all of that. And then people kept talking about Manson and kept visiting him in prison, like, because that man would do an interview, you know, to a toothpick. And then nobody ever talked about these women again. And I was like, what the fuck is that? But this was part of the problem. So much was known about Manson and the Manson family that Guinevere didn't know where to go. But then she found Carlene Faith. You can't imagine this day when I started reading her book and I was like, oh, like I have a story to tell. There's an untold story here. Like I have a revelation that is feminist, that is complex. Charlie Says tells the story of Carlene Faith, a feminist criminologist who co-founded the Santa Cruz Women's Prison Project, from which she would start teaching Leslie, Susan and Patricia whilst they were incarcerated. She first met the women in 1972, right when second wave feminism was beginning to take off. And so she introduced them to the movement's seminal texts. And as the film progresses, with flashbacks following Van Houten's story, layers of these women begin to peel back and you see the other side that has just not been told before. Sharon Tate was the last to get murdered and she was begging and pleading with Susan Atkins uh, not to kill her. And Susan Atkins said she looked at her in the eyes and she said, look bitch, I don't care about you or your baby. You're gonna die and you better be ready for it and I don't feel a thing about it. These women committed horrific acts of violence which should not be forgotten. It's included in the film, but it's balanced by these reminders that they too were victims, victims of Charles Manson. And Guinevere says that this balancing act was never not on her mind whilst writing. So I would ask myself several questions. Number one, if it was up to me if they were paroled, would I parole them? To which I say, absolutely. So that I would ask myself, if it was my sister, would I feel like, of course, they should be paroled? And I would say, on the one hand, I want to say yes. There's my ideal self, and then there's the person who can imagine random, crazy people stabbing my sister, and, and then I'd be like, no, I'll fucking stab them myself. It's like, let them rot in hell. Like, there's, you know, those are two sides that I was always balancing. Charlie Says was, of course, not the only film in 2019 to feature Charles Manson. Whoa, whoa. Here I come. Anybody order fried sauerkraut? <laughs> 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 
Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It was arguably the most anticipated release of the year outside of the Avengers, but the ending has, in typical Tarantino fashion, caused controversy. Tarantino rewrote history by brutally killing the murderers of Sharon Tate before they ever reached the actress. The intention of this was to give her back the life that she had lost, but the problem raised by some is that it ignores the realities of who these women were. There was like just so much, um, I don't even know what to call it, sort of spectacularizing thrill at seeing these hip, you know, these kind of hippie girls get what was coming to them. It's obviously a mission of mine to try to call attention to the fact that by and large, the women of the Manson family were young women who had come from really vulnerable, difficult, you know, family of origin situations. And like, I don't know why as a culture, we just stop being sympathetic to them. They obviously did some horrible things, but this weird inability to kind of have any empathy for, for the women who got involved with him is, is something I'm still trying to sort out. Jeffrey Melnick is a cultural historian who has written about the women who killed for Manson, as well as the man himself. And his book encourages the readers to question why he remains in our consciousness. He suggests that misogyny might even play a part in this. It's like quasi-porn, you know? It's like um, these available women, this like pervy appeal of watching women being dominated. The treatment of the women who killed for Manson, and even the fact they are still referred to today as Manson girls, evidences the continuing misogyny that people like Guinevere Turner and the late Carleen Faith have been trying to stamp out. Misogynistic portrayals of these women are an under-discussed element of Manson's legacy, and it's perhaps something that the media should look at and think about if we're going to continue discussing Manson and the women who killed for him.